Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting problem. We have an upside down cone that's filled to a height of 6 meters. Notice that the radius of the cone at the top is 4 meters and the height of the total cone is 8 meters. So the job is to take the water in the cone here and pump it out to the level of the top of the cone. So that means that the farther down we have to go and pump the water out, the greater amount of work it will take because we have to lift it over a greater distance. So what will be the total work required to lift up all this water onto the surface area? So let's, see that this, let's say that this is a tank that's buried beneath the floor and we want to pump the water out to the floor level. All right, how to do that? Well, we need to understand a few things. First of all, we need to see the relationship between the height to the radius of the cone. And if we then take a look at the outside here, that looks like an equation of the order of y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. In this case, the slope will be the ratio of the rise over the run. That will be 8 divided by 4. Therefore, we have y equals 2x as the relationship between the height and the radius of the cone. We can solve this equation for x, x equals 1 half y, therefore the radius anywhere along the height of the cone is equal to 1 half the height above the ground right here. Now we're going to slice a small little slice of that cone, now this will be a small little volume of water, it's kind of flat disk, the volume of that disk will be called dv, it'll be the surface area times the height which is a small little dy. The surface area will be pi r squared, so the volume becomes pi r squared times dy. Now we need to find the mass of that small little amount of water, and we know that the relationship between mass, volume, and density is that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume which means that the small amount of mass in that slice is equal to the density of the water, which of course is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times the dV, like this, which means that this is equal to the density times pi r squared dy. So now we have an expression that tells us the amount of mass of water is in that small little slice, and we now will have to lift that up to the top. What is the distance from there to there? Well, if we take the total distance to be 8 and subtract from that the height of that little slice, which is y, so y would be the height from there to there, that means the amount of distance we have to lift it, let's call this distance h, h can then be defined as being the total height 8 minus the distance, the height that the water already is at. So this will be the amount of height that we have to lift the water through for every little slice. As you get up higher, y becomes bigger, 8 minus y becomes a smaller amount, so that seems to work out. So now what we're going to do is calculate the amount of work done for a small little slice, which is equal to the force applied times the height through which we have to lift it. So in this case, that's going to be equal to the weight of this little slice. The weight is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, so that's dm times g, this represents the weight of a small little slice of water that we have to lift through a distance h, and h is 8 minus y. Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm already thinking about having an r here and a dy that we can't have that. We'll have to replace r by what it's equal to in terms of y. So we can say that r squared is equal to 1 quarter y squared, if we square both sides, so we'll have to replace r squared by 1 quarter y squared when we bring that across. So now we have the total work done is equal to the sum of all the little dw's, and we're going to lift it from y equals 0 to y equals 6, so from 0 to 6, and um, yeah, because the water is of course between those two heights, so we take all the water from y equals 0 all the way up to all the water where y equals 6 of dw, and dw is equal to this, so that's equal to the integral from 0 to 6 of dm. Now dm is equal to rho pi r squared dy, so that's our dm times g multiplied times 8 minus y. And of course, at this point, we realize we have to make that replacement. Instead of r squared, we'll write 1 quarter y squared. So this becomes equal to 
we can already pull out a row. We can pull out the one quarter that's going to go in for r squared. So r squared is one quarter y squared. So one quarter rho times pi times g. Those are all constants. Then we have left inside integral sine from 0 to 6. Instead of r squared, we'll have y squared times 8 minus y dy, which is equal to 1 quarter rho pi g times the integral from 0 to 6 of, when we multiply this out, we get 8y squared minus y cubed times dy. And so that becomes our integral to calculate the work done to lift all that water out of that cone-shaped basin. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate that. So this is equal to 1 quarter, whoop, 1 quarter, uh, the density times pi times g times, we have 8y cubed over 3 minus y to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to 6. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing, but when we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. So this is equal to 1 quarter times density pi g times, plugging in the upper limit, we get 6 cubed divided by 3. Now 6 cubed is 216 divided by 3 is, let's see here, let's make it a little bit easier. So 216 divided by 3 is 72 times 8. We get 576 minus 6 to the fourth power, that's 36 squared divided by 4 equals 324. And if we subtract 324 from 576, so let's see it here. So we have 576 minus 324, that gives 252, divided by 4. So that would be 252 divided by 4 times the density times pi times g. So divide that by 4 equals at 63. So this becomes 63 times the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times pi, and times g, which is 9.8. So let's see what that becomes. So times 1,000, times pi, and times 9.8 equals, which leaves us with 1.9, let's see here, that's three zeros, yes, 1.94, 1.94 times 10 to the sixth, and of course, the units again will be joules. So that's how much energy, or that's how much work it takes to lift the water in this upside down cone that has filled the cone from height zero to height equals six meters. When you lift it up to the surface, it will require that amount of work. And that's how it's done.